my people what's good welcome back to the channel welcome to patel fc we are within and chelsea are a crazy hollywood type entity right now it's madness we don't even need help from external figures we don't need the premier league to investigate us we don't need issues from external figures we don't have 115 charges internally todd bowley Egbali, is it Ber Berdad Egbali, and other people? I've learned about someone called Jose Feliciano, some uh, Puerto Rican American businessman. They're all involved in investment management and they're disagreeing internally about how Chelsea has been ran. So, initially, right, we all look at Todd Bowley as that guy. That's the main figure because he's the face of this whole project. When the consortium's bought Chelsea in May 2022, from my understanding, Todd Bowley was given more of a, of a say in terms of decision making. But recently, apparently, Ed Bali took the front seat in terms of decision making. And since then, apparently, Todd Bowley has lost his faith in everyone else on the board. And now, Jose Feliciano and Ed Bali, who are co-founders of Clear Lake Capital, have now disagreed in a sense with the other investors who are Todd Bowley himself and Mark Walter, who I learned about recently, also in, in investment management, and a quite elderly businessman from Switzerland called Hans George. Hans George Wiss. Wiss, that's how I'm going to say it, guys. Oh, forgive me. But yeah, all these men own Chelsea. They all own Chelsea. I believe Mark Walter even has shares in the LA Dodgers. I think he's a chairman or something like that. So these guys are involved in other sporting entities and they all have American links, maybe born in other countries, but these are Americans. So yeah, now they're disagreeing. After buying 40 players, guys, they're disagreeing. So Chelsea, we're worried about what's going to happen on the pitch. We're worried about Maresca, but there's a lot more to worry about now because the board can't even agree on how to get things done. So that's crazy. I wanna just uh, highlight something, guys. We signed 40 players. Between May 2022 and September 2024, Chelsea have signed 40 players, guys. <laughs> and let's first speak about it in terms of continental um, approach, right? From South America, we have Caicedo, Enzo Fernandez, Kenji Pires, Esteval William, Angelo Gabriel, Andre Santos, David, Ga David Washington, Aaron Anselmino, there could be others. Africa, Aubameyang, Koulibaly, and Nicholas Jackson. France alone, Malo Gusto, De Sassi, Badiashio, Ugo Chukwu, Nkunku, Wesley Fofana. I think Nkunku and Wesley Fofana, it's the end of Abramovich's era into Bowley's era. So I don't know if they fall in the Bowley era. Kopama, Seems to be the only Englishman, I believe, that we've signed. We've also been to North America, where we've got Slonina, Caleb Wiley, signing American boys as well. It's crazy. So many other signings in the Todd Bowley era. 40 in total. Of course, Noni Medwake is the Marco Correla's count as well. So yeah, um, after signing 40 players, now, some influenced more by Todd Bowley. Some influence more by Iqbali. We don't even know how much power Joe Shields and the other technical directors really have in this decision making. We just know we have recruitment guys all over the world. We just know about that. But internally at Chelsea, it's a headache. It's a headache. And for the Chelsea fan, who should you go with? 61.5% owned by Clear Lake Capital and the 38.5%, I believe, owned by the other investors, Todd Bowley, Mark Walter, and Horse, Horse George Wiss. <laughs> so Todd Bowley seems to have the backing and investors and people saying that they would invest to get him to buy out Clearly Capital. But Clearly Capital are not interested in that. And they're not interested in Bowley selling his shares to someone external either. So they're going to sort of halt Todd Bowley from selling to another entity and Todd Bowley himself doesn't seem to be keen on a civil war where he's fighting Iqbali and, and Jose Feliciano and the co-founders of Clear Lake Capital just keep fighting back 
and it just gets more expensive. <laughs> I believe it just gets more expensive. After buying 40 players, they acquired Chelsea for, I think, just a deal, a deal around 4.26 billion. I don't know if that includes investment that they pledged into the club, but it was a hefty amount. And Todd Bowley says he can raise about 2.5 to buy the other guys out. But uh, this happened in the last three days since Friday, guys. Where do we go as Chelsea fans? Do we focus on this? Do we focus on the football? How does this impact the players in time? What happens if if now um, the Clear Lake Capital buy out Todd Bowley and the other investors and they just don't like the project? They don't like the 14-man transfer window that we just had. And all these players on seven-year contracts and now need to be somehow cut down to five-year contracts. How much turmoil could that bring to Stamford Bridge? Got to ask ourselves. We have to consider. I personally would prefer that Todd Bowley buys everyone out. Only because I feel Todd Bowley is focused on what happens on the pitch. We've had to sell hotels and parking lots to keep up with FFP, guys. I feel like those decisions weren't made by Todd Bowley, but rather those that are trying to make more money. So just avoid the headache and keep bringing in the players that will become profit. That's clearly capital in my opinion. As much as Todd Bowley does want to make money, I think he understands that trophies need to come and we need to be appealing as a club in terms of stature for us to actually make that money. When the conference league guys, if we don't make it into a better competition next season, What's attractive about Chelsea and, and why would you want to buy a Chelsea player? Maybe because they're cheap. <laughs> Let's get it, y'all.